Hello all, uh, welcome to the new video of signals and systems. In this video, we'll see about the history of super heterodyne receiver. It was invented by Edwin Armstrong during World War I. So, before going into the working of super heterodyne receiver, I will give you about the brief history as why and how the super heterodyne receiver was invented and how important it was uh, then during World War One, what impact it had. So let's see that uh, before going into the actual working of this super heterodyne receiver. So during World War One, there were several countries called as Allied Forces, which included United States, Great Britain, France, Russia, and some other countries. So they fought against the Central Powers which mainly included Germany. So at that time Germany were ahead of other countries that is other allied forces as in they were able to communicate amongst themselves with their forces uh, over a large distance with the suitable equipment. They were able to build a suitable equipment which would enable them to communicate with their forces located at some large distance with the help of wireless communication. However, these allied forces were not able to track that message. So what the Germans uh, usually did that time, they used certain high frequency signals to communicate with each other. As you can see, there are two ships, each belong to Germany. So the main chief was sitting in the black ship, as you can see in the large uh, right sided diagram. So at very large distance, there were a military force of Germany which were waiting for any message from their chief. So the chief would be able to say for example he would send a signal that let's attack Great Britain at this place. However, since the war was going on everybody was aware that uh, like Germany could attack any time. However, they were not able to track the message. So, especially France, Russia and Italy were not able to and United States were not able to build a device which could extract the message from this signal. So as I said earlier, uh, Germans were using high frequency signals. So we can now know that those high frequency signals were in the range of 500 kilohertz to 3 megahertz. So they were using this frequency range to communicate amongst themselves. Still most of the allied countries uh, who were aware about this communication were not able to build a circuit which would extract the message from this signal, these high frequency signals. So some of these allied countries were uh, the United States, France, Russia and Italy. They were not able to figure out how to extract the message from these signals because at that time it was incredibly difficult to build a receiving circuit as well as an amplifier using vacuum tubes when the input is of this high frequency signal especially when the range was this high they were not aware only the Germans were aware they were technically ahead so they were able to communicate and they would plan well in advance as how to attack and where to attack so they had an upper hand. So even United States uh, had joined the World War I so we are slowly getting into the main story as how this was invented it was uh, by now uh, I have already mentioned that it was invented by Edwin Armstrong so he hails from United States so he is an engineer and inventor so let's see how we invented and what motivated him to invent this and where did he find out the theory of working on this super heterodyne receiver. So when uh, United States entered World War I, Edwin Armstrong was sent to Paris So and he was made as the head of research section. So he was the head of that research section whose job was 
to build a receiving circuit which could extract the message from those high frequency signals sent by the germans amongst themselves so what he did while traveling to paris he met an engineer from british marconi company marconi whenever we hear this word marconi it means he is one of the great radio greats so he met uh, one of the engineer from british marconi company they learned that british were ahead than united states in building a receiving circuit we learned that you know great britain had already built a receiving circuit which could extract the message from those high frequency signals so so whenever you need to receive any signal you need two things first you need a tuning circuit and you need a amplifier because if you don't have amplifier the signals will die out that is you will not be able to extract any message because there is no signal till you receive it so building an amplifier is of highest importance so this great britain had thrived in that aspect so what they did they were able to build a amplifier during that time there were no bjps or mosfets when if you had to build an amplifier you have to use vacuum tubes so as you can see hj round he had built a vacuum tubes which were capable of amplifying this high frequency signals that is 500 kilohertz to 3 megahertz so he would extract the message and if there were some ports and all as you know alan turing he was uh, able to crack to those codes okay first he would extract the message hj round would extract the message from those high frequency message signals and give it to alan turing his job was to break the code that is if it is hello world if it is encrypted he would decrypt it so in that way great britain were ahead amongst all other allied countries so they were able to keep track of many german ships and that cracked almost all the codes and they so let me summarize what we learned till now so what happened edwin armstrong before heading to paris he met an engineer from a british marconi company so there he learned that the british were able to amplify high frequency signals using vacuum tubes which united states were not aware of so he was thinking about that aspect and parallelly what he saw was he saw a phenomenon where suppose if a signal is sent from a transmitter at say f1 hertz so that signal can be heard at f1 hertz at the receiving station if you tune it to that frequency you can hear what is being sent at the transmitter also with the local oscillator present at the receiving side is at f2 hertz then this signal which is sent at f1 can also be heard at two more frequencies okay that two more frequencies are f1 plus f2 hertz as well as f1 minus f2 hertz so let's ignore that f1 plus f2 hertz as it is uh, not of much importance so what armstrong felt was if a signal is sent at f1 hertz with the proper with proper value of local oscillator frequency we can hear the signal at a much lower frequency that is say the british were sending at 500 to 3 megahertz that is 500 kilohertz to 3 megahertz let's take that 500 kilohertz as a frequency so let me take take that say germans were sending at 500 kilohertz united states were not aware of how to amplify this high frequency signal so i can uh, i have written a point here there was no practical amplifier to amplify high frequency signals at least from united states perspective whereas british were able to do this they were able to amplify this signal and then they were able to extract the message and allen turing uh, was able to crack the code and they were at the safe side our united states were not safe till now so they at that point we are not so this 500 kilohertz which is sent at the transmitter by germans 
it can be heard at 500 kilohertz however uh, what uh, united states said they built a tuning amplifier first okay that means this tuning if you tune it to 500 kilohertz we we'll get this signal here 500 kilohertz however they were not able to hear that is the signal would die out signal would die because no proper amplifier no proper amplifier circuit so what armstrong saw the phenomenon was if it is sent at 500 kilohertz and if say local oscillator is at 450 kilohertz local oscillator is at 450 kilohertz then if this signal is mixed with this local oscillator we get two more frequency that is 500 plus 450 that is 950 kilohertz and 50 kilohertz so whatever the message say let's attack us was the message in this signal this message will be present in even in 50 kilohertz as well as 950 kilohertz and at that time united states had an amplifier which could amplify which could amplify this 50 kilohertz signal so that's when this phenomenon with, with the help of this phenomenon armstrong built a super heterodyne circuit and that's how even United States were able to extract the message from that signal, very high frequency signal and then they were able to crack the code. So this is the history behind super heterodyne receiver. So let's see the actual circuit. So as you can see this is the receiving side of a radio receiver. That is there is a transmitter and then there is a receiver. So this is the receiver. So uh, let me explain uh, the idea of super heterodyne with the help of a block diagram. So as you can see this is a receiver and our transmitter is emitting I'd say this is transmitter Px. So this will emit say frequency at 1500 kilohertz. It has a message in it. Say let's uh, destroy United States. Let's attack US. This is a message. Okay. So this will uh, flow through the space and then there is a receiver okay so this will amplify this 1500 kilohertz then so that it will retain till it goes to the mixer and if what armstrong did was he designed the local oscillator at 1560 kilohertz so this what happened we would get 1500 kilohertz here before this and in mixer What we get? We get two signals. One is 1560 minus 1500. Oops. Kilohertz. And 1560 plus 1500 kilohertz. This is a simple uh, cosine multiplication formula. Cos A cos B is equal to cos a plus b plus cos a minus b into 0.5 so this is 60 kilohertz so let's ignore this value ignore so only 60 kilohertz would go to the next circuit okay so it would go to the if amplifier this 60 kilohertz is called as intermediate frequency okay because it has been originated in the middle this 60 kilohertz still contains the original modulation scheme that is this 60 kilohertz will still have the message signal into in that so we still have this message here 
embedded in that signal. So, if we demodulate this 60 kilohertz signal, we we'll get the audio. Okay, in that audio, if uh, whatever has been communicated in German, you can hear it. You can track the message. Track the message. If it is encrypted, then there are set of uh, other experts who can decrypt the message. So, this uh, super heterodyne receiver was uh, invented in the World War I. So, if you look back at history, it will tell us how, how important inventions are happened uh, in the World War I and World War II. So, this is of, uh, this receiver is used in almost every radio receiver in the world and Edwin Armstrong has contributed widely in other uh, what is that, uh, fields as well in communication systems. So, he is you can call him the father of radio. Okay. So, thanks for watching. This is the brief history of Super Heterodyne Receiver and it's working. Uh, kindly subscribe to our channel. So, if you have any doubts regarding the Super Heterodyne Receiver, you can use the comment section. And also, please don't forget to like our Facebook page. Thank you. And please subscribe.